current separatist agitations in Nigeria are not surprising in view of the country's diversity, the disparities in demography, land mass, natural resources, endowment, educational, social, and economic development. Arguably, these disparities have created and continue to sustain mutual mistrust, acrimony, and fear of ethnic domination not only among Nigerians' 250 ethnic groups, but also among the majority groups, inter, say, and the ethnic minorities. It is in this light that we condemn the current arrest and detention of Namdekano Sunday Igboho and other separatist agitators by agents of the federal government. The Nigerian Constitution, the African Charter on People's Rights and the United Nations Declarations on Human Rights, all of which Nigeria is a signatory guarantee individual freedom of speech, association and movement. Therefore, people who agitate for separation and has reason to think so should not be treated as common criminals. You cannot force a person to live with you if he or she feels otherwise. Reasons for the demand for the separation by various ethnic groups could be found in the centrifugal forces generated by Nigerians' ethno-cultural diversity pre-independence and have continued to ignite separatism in the Federation with each disadvantaged ethnic group agitating for greater space for self-expression. The military junta, which ruled Nigeria for the longest period since post-independence, effectively suppressed these tendencies through brazen force without necessarily exterminating them. However, with the return of democratic rule in May 29, 1999, came a resurgence of separatist agitations, which have polarized the federation along ethnic, regional, and religious lines. Thus, supporting the view expressed by Walter Emerson that the introduction of democratic institutions may sometimes accentuate existing ethnic divisions in ethnically divided polities. Arguably, the ingrained ethnic rivalries amongst Nigerians' desperate ethnic groups were not hidden from the colonial government because at the secrecy of state for the colonies, Oliver Littleton once said, the only cement which kept the rickety structure of Nigeria together was the British. Left to themselves, they would clearly fall apart in a few moments. Although, unfortunately to the above grim prediction has not materialized, there is no doubt that the country is more divided now than ever before. The increasing drums for separatism being beaten by several ethno-cultural and militant groups, including the movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Masob, the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, led by Nam Kano, and the Niger Delta Avengers movement for the emancipation of Niger Delta, Northern Elders Forum, Yoruba Separatist Group led by Sunday Igboho, Arawa Youth Consultative Forum, and so on, are irre irrepressible signs of fractured states of the Federation of Nigeria. From history, agitation for peaceful separation fanned by ethnic nationalism has been happening and will continue to happen because human needs are insatiable. In some cases, separation serves an avenue for a healthy competition for development, as in the case of Singapore and Malaysia, India and Pakistan, Norway, Denmark and Switzerland. Indeed, it is difficult to think of any multi ethnic state in Europe where one group dominated the rest that hasn't broke, broken up. For those who do not know, what we call ethnic groups in Nigeria are called nations in Europe. There is nowhere in the world where the white man accepts domination from another white man in perpetuity. The founding fathers of present-day America did it when they moved away from British domination to their current abode. It used to be so under the Roman Empire and the like. Not anymore. The communists tried it, dividing society into capitalists and pro lesterans deluding themselves and the ethnicity are effectively swept under the carpet. But what followed? The communist edifice in Czechnosovia, Yugoslavia, and the big brother USSR all collapsed, while the two Germans are ethnically the same but split by communism versus capitalism were you reunited. Such is the power of ethnic nationalism. Czechoslovakia was made up of two ethnic groups, the Czech and the 
Slovakanias, both separated peacefully on the 1st of January 1993. The former is today 10.6 million people and the latter 5.4 million. Added together, they are not up to Lagos, yet they split for peace. Yugoslavia in 1991 was 23.2 million, barely more than Lagos population. It broke into six countries the same year, all along ethnic lines, namely Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, and Slovenia. Many countries of the world separated from one nation or the other. In 1776, the U.S. split from the U.K. In 1830, Belgium separated from the Netherlands. In, six, in 1965, Singapore split off from Malaysia. In 2002, East Timor got split off from Indonesia. In 1921, Ireland split, split off from the United Kingdom. In 1944, Iceland split from Denmark with a remarkable ease. In 1905, Norway split from Denmark. In 1905, Norway and Sweden also peacefully split ways. There are other instances. In 1947, the British India Dominion was partitioned into India and Pakistan. In 1971, Bangladesh said he seceded from Pakistan. And in 1965, Singapore split from Malaysia for a variety of reasons, including religion. Even small African countries such as Ethiopia and Eritrea parted ways just as Sudan and South Sudan became separate countries. Today, our fingers will not be enough to count the numbers of countries that have emerged from the USSR. To address separatism in Nigeria, the federal government needs to look into the concerns and grievances of these various ethnic groups. Through dialogue, as opposed to the use of military force, more so, it is important that the Nigerian government revisit the three-hour policy of rehabilitation, reconstruction, and reintegration promised after the Nigerian Civil War. It has been argued on several occasions that the failure of government to achieve this is one of the major reasons for the recurrence of uprisings. Unless the government takes some form of action to understand the concerns of the separatist agitators, it wreaks perpetual agitation for independent entities from other ethnic groups. Buhari is just using force intimidation to stop all of this. We've seen that Nigeria is not only, uh, it's not the first time, it's not new. These agitations, they are not new. We saw a list of countries that went their separate ways when things were not working. They did not use force, they did not use military. But Buhari wants to intimidate, he wants to oppress. He cannot continue to do that. Well, my people, let's hear your take down below in the comment section. Thank you once again for staying tuned. And please don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. Till I come your way again with more updates. Bye.